Hey GOTA members, welcome to the May episode of GOTA TV. We're fresh off this year's record-setting SMC in San Antonio. Thank you to the more than 800 GOTA members who attended this year's event and helped to continue to raise the bar year after year. This year's SMC kicked off on Friday, April 19th with board and committee meetings all day. The GOTA board continues to work tirelessly on behalf of all GOTA members to address the issues and challenges that we all face in our day-to-day -day businesses. This year also saw the addition of a new technology committee. Stay tuned later this episode as we hear from technology committee co-chairs Hector Villarreal and John Vrana. Friday at the SMC also saw the Young Professionals Committee host a Lunch and Learn with Gary Halter as well as their annual scavenger hunt. And this year's hunt featured a fun twist as each group of young professionals was paired with a superhero cape clad legend of the industry. It was a massive success and we extend a warm thank you to Gary and the legends of the industry for giving back to the gaudy young professionals. The women of Gas and Welding also held a meet and greet before the newcomers reception. 40 women were able to gather before the newcomers reception and the welcome reception to meet like-minded professionals and to get acclimated to the show before the official kickoff. Thank you to all of those who attended. The show's first official events were the newcomers reception, which featured 75 first-time attendees joined by GOTA committee chairs and past presidents. With this year's musical theme, it was a veritable who's who of famous musicians. Thank you to all of those who participated. Then, after a short walk to the world-famous ESPY, the event kicked off with what was billed as a little bit of country and a little bit of rock and roll, but turned out to be a lot rock and roll, including this special presentation by the Angus Young-clad Gary Holter. The night was pure gauda, and it was the perfect kickoff to this year's event. And after a big party on Friday, we got down to business on Saturday. The day kicked off with main stage presentations from Dirk Beveridge and an AI presentation from Dr. Jonathan Bine. Then attendees had the opportunity to attend two out of six educational sessions, which ranged in topics from employee retention to cybersecurity and everything in between. Thank you to our esteemed volunteer presenters, as well as to all those who attended those educational sessions. Following the educational sessions was the Contact Booth Program. With 136 exhibitors and more than 500 attendees, this year's Contact Booth Program was a slam dunk. This year also saw the recognition of the Best in Show presented by the Industry Partnering Committee. Congratulations to Equigas and Uniwell, which were two of the finalists for the award, and to Exacor, who took home the inaugural Best in Show award. The SMC concluded on Sunday with two more main stage presentations. First, ITW's Dave Lambert and Sharon Safransky gave the industry keynote as they discussed the state of the welding industry, ITW's enterprise strategy, and concluded the presentation with a hilarious music video that featured Dave covering the sounds of silence. The final presenter of the conference was New York Times bestselling author Adrian Gostick. Adrian continued the theme of the week, discussing the importance of a strong corporate culture, leadership, and engagement, and how high-performing companies can cultivate that engagement. And he effortlessly fit right into the Agata aesthetic, combining a strong message with levity and humor. Sunday also saw the presentation of this year's Gata Scholarship winners and the announcement of the Gata Gives Back recipient during this year's annual convention in Phoenix, Hope Kids. To learn more about the charity or to donate, click the link in the description below. Once again, we can't thank you all enough for being with us in San Antonio. And the fun doesn't stop there, as we have a full summer of in-person events scheduled, culminating in the annual convention in Phoenix in October. For a full list of GOTA events, click the link in the description below. We've got an amazing show lined up for you today, and it all comes after a word from today's presenting sponsor, Weldcoa.
joining us first today from Keen Compressed Gas are Brian Keen and Justin Johnson. Brian and Justin presented during the SMC's educational sessions. Their presentation, Kicking Gas, was one of the most well-attended sessions. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us today. For those who weren't able to attend your presentation, can you give us a quick overview about some of the key topics that you discussed? Yeah, so the, the, the key slide or the key topics we, we, we discussed um, to us, right, we have uh, three pillars, commitment, strategy, and team. Um, Got to have commitment from the whole organization from the top down. Got to have the right strategy. Um, and then, of course, you got to have the team members that buy into the commitment, that buy into the strategy and are able to execute it. And, and Justin pulls all that together with his sales team. And, um, you know, it, it, all has to, it all has to flow. It all has to work in unison for it to really be done right. Um, you know, in a nutshell, those are, the, those are the pillars that we found. If we stick to it and we stick to it in a disciplined fashion, it's, it's, the benefits have been really great for us. One of those key things that you discussed was that gas is such a worthwhile investment. Can you discuss what led you to that belief? Yeah, gas is just the uniqueness of this industry. Uh, as, as the industry evolves, um, there's fewer and fewer players in the gas industry, and there's more and more players on the hard goods side, and there's more and more competition on the hard goods side. But the gas industry is so unique. It's what we do well. Um, it's what the majors or the others don't do well, right? The big box stores don't do well. Um, so the, that, that, that value added, that uniqueness to our industry, um, it's going to be a long time before people catch up to us on the gas side of the business. And, uh, you know, it, it, again, if you do it right, if it all works in unison, the, the return on investment is, is very strong. You referred in the description of your presentation to cylinder rentals as the golden goose. You also referred to them as, at various times as your retirement fund and your kids' retirement fund. What did you mean by that? Yeah, look, um, return on assets, and, and these, these assets get more and more expensive uh, over the last couple of years, for sure. So you've got to get your return on them, and they, they last a long, long time if you take care of them, uh, and you take care of the, the customer, and you are able to bill rent on a regular basis at a, at a fair return. Uh, it gives back to you for years and years and years. Yep, it's the way to go. Justin, you talked from more of a sales perspective about how the company has made all these investments and how it was your responsibility to make sure that there was a return on those investments. What kinds of process improvements have you put in place to ensure that you can achieve that return? Yeah, I mean, I'd, if you had to summarize it, I would really just say an investment in the team, right? Investment in, in building the team, training the team, communicating with the team, and setting parameters around what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. And um, constantly managing profitability, chasing low margin accounts, um, and just continuous improvement within, within the sales organization and the organization as a whole. Um, Brian likes to say a lot of times in our leadership meetings, I'm constantly pushing the envelope uh, with operations and finance. And, you know, a lot of times I'm the biggest pain in the room. But um, that's what I, I like to think continues to allow us to grow and think about different things and, and drive the business. At one point during the presentation, you put up a picture of the naked cowboy from New York City and said, the clothes make the man. What does that mentality mean to you, and how has it been so successful at Keen? So in, the, in that example, the clothes are resources, right? So without resources, we're really all the same. So um, in, my, in my position, in my role, I like to make sure I'm in very close to the resources that are needed from, from the sales team. And you know, everybody in the organization really to make sure we're providing them with everything that they need to be successful uh, so that they're not the naked cowboy. You've both been to a lot of these shows and attended a lot of these sessions. For you, if attendees were able to walk away with one thing from your presentation and bring it back to their company, what would you want that to be? Well, um, there's a lot of opportunity in this business. And, you know, we've all been to go to meetings for years and years, and we've learned a lot from each other. And, you know, you just keep learning. You just keep making your business better. You just keep investing in your people, investing in your business strategy. Um, and, and there's nothing else like this industry that has the, the, the ability to, um, you know, give you your return on investment and, and the, the enjoyment that you get from running your business. Um, God is great. Gentlemen, we appreciate your time today and for lending your expertise at the SMC. Thank you so much. Being active for more than 70 years, always following the original mission. Wherever gas is the integral part and provides energy for everyday life, there will be the technological and productive commitment from Cavania Group. We're lucky enough to be joined next on the show by the two co-chairmen of GADA's new technology committee. 
Thank you to Hector Villarreal from Weltcoa and John Vrana from Red Ball Oxygen for joining the show. Gentlemen, can we start today by having you tell us a little bit about this new committee? Yeah, this committee is going to be uh, focused on kind of uh, helping GATA com members kind of build a knowledge base for uh, emerging technologies and just any kind of best practices and procedures for the our GATA members. Yeah, I think focusing on best practices and procedures is key to get this off the ground. Um, starting off with cutting edge technology for people who aren't um, comfortable with, you know, the current uh, status of technology just doesn't make sense. So, yeah, I agree. Best practices is where to start. And starting, you know, in the area of cybersecurity in particular, I think is really important to everybody right now. It's been a long time since God added a new committee. How did the idea of forming this committee come about and what attracted you both to join it? When uh, it was brought to my attention, um, the uh, Gauda leadership was looking for uh, people to talk on the new developments in technology. And I think, you know, we, we've both been talking about AI quite a bit. Um, that's kind of, you know, COVID, I think, was the first wake up call, right? Uh, we, we need to be more digital. E even though that had been out for a while, I think people just recognized, you know, the, the need was immediate with COVID and they stepped into it. Um, and now um, AI has come into the marketplace and people don't know a lot about it. There's a lot of, you know, false information out there. I think we would both agree. Um, but it is going to change things. Um, and, and you have to understand um, how that affects your business. So um, that's how I got into it. Um, I've always been into technology. Well, COA, that's what we do. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we, we push technology, obviously, to our clients. But internally, we're also big uh, users of it as well. So, Yeah, I think those are um, going to hit the, 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 the nail on the head there. Um, so with me, I've been in the technology field for about 20 years now. And I can remember back whenever technology was seen just as a kind of a overhead, you know, cost of doing business. Um, and since COVID, actually, like you said, uh, it's been really this push to see, to see that technology can really drive and, you know, there's innovation there and it can actually help, you know, your, it, can, it can align with your company's strategies and goals. And I think GATA, uh, with, you know, starting this committee is, uh, you know, seeing this, how it is important to continue to innovate and to continue to grow in technology as well. Hector, you just touched on this a second ago, but how are you both utilizing cutting edge technology inside your own companies? Uh, integration is a big part. Uh, having uh, the ability to at any time see, you know, where where deliveries are. And having all of your your systems being able to talk to each other, communicate, so that you know your your uh, delivery routes at the same time uh, are communicating with your ERP. Your ERP is communicating with your your uh, asset tracking. All that at the same time at any given time, and having the ability right at your fingertips to, to get that information. Um, in real time is, uh, is an important factor to make sure that everything um, uh, at our company, we have a thing called the, you know, the perfect order, uh, can make sure that everything goes out on time, every time, 100%, and having been able to see that in real time really helps us maintain that perfect order. Yeah, um, you know, well, COA is all about technology. Um, as a manufacturer internally, you know, we have several robotic work cells. Um, we have uh, a uh, fiber laser, we have automated um, saws, Any, anywhere um, that we can automate, we've automated, and that includes in the office. You know, we started to digitize the office process years ago. Um, it, it never ends. It, that's an, uh, anybody who's dealt with ERP systems, it, it, it's an ongoing thing. That, that, that beast must be fed every day, right? Um, externally, um, Providing the technology to move our clients into the future is what we've been doing. I remember spending the first 10 years of my career in the industry, you know, telling everybody, you should consider automation, you should consider automation. And I will never forget the day when I got that first phone call where somebody said, I want to automate, what do I do? And I was, literally, I was like, I've been waiting for this phone call for 10 years, let me tell you. So, you know, we, we continue to uh, push that process. 
you know, um, we, we have uh, programmers in-house, we have engineers in-house, we have uh, electrical engineers in-house. So, you know, we're, we're very much uh, about it, for sure. You said that it was 10 years before you got a call on automation. So what's that next thing? What's the next disruptor for GATA members that the technology committee will be focusing on? So um, it was um, 2014, I believe. Um, I was in Dubai uh, for Gas World. And um, about a week earlier, I was working on my presentation. And for the first time, I added um, a, a, just a five minute piece on IBM's Watson, which was you know just a thing that was developing. Watson had just beat Jeopardy, um, it had uh, beat the chess champion, and I was talking about how you know this isn't a uh, fantasy anymore. This is coming, and it's going to be coming fast. And um, and, and I talked about um, co robots in the same presentation. Uh, fast forward to today. And that is, you know, co-robots uh, is something that the industry has been pushing now for a little while. Um, what people don't recognize is that we're coming to this period in time where robotics, biology, AI, and quantum computing are going to come together. And if you think things have changed quickly in the last five years, you have seen nothing yet. It is, it is going to increase much quicker than everybody believes it is. Yeah, with uh, the prominence of AI, like you said, it's going to be, I mean, even already it's, it's exponential pace there of how fast things are, are moving. Um, and with that, uh, another a key factor is uh, a cybersecurity because with all this change, you have to maintain you know, your, your, your security and, and how you're going to secure this as these new you know, technologies, you know, are developed and, are, and as they grow, and that's going to be a, uh, something we have to maintain and, and, and keep on top of as well. Yeah, I think I'd like to add that the, uh, for better or for worse, historically, the illicit industries are the ones to capitalize on new technology. Um, if you don't believe that hackers are using AI to become better hackers, you are incorrect. So, yeah, cybersecurity really has to become a uh, top of the list uh, imperative for everybody in our industry. For members who are hearing what you're saying and they feel that they have something that they could add to the discussion, what's the next step for a GATA member interested in joining the committee? Yeah, please reach out. And, and you know, um, don't think um, that you have to be a techie to join the group. If you have an interest in learning about technology and getting a better understanding and you have no background for it, Please join. This this will be the perfect environment for you to just you know. It's a different vocabulary, um, and you know, I, I, this industry is great about sharing. I, you know, I've been doing this now for 28 years, and um, this industry is so different than any other industry. It, it's really you know the the success of of everyone is on how much information we share, and you see that at Gouda, you see that at CGA. Um, it, it, we're very very fortunate to have you know, this uh, society that uh, really props each and every one of us up. Yeah, as, as Hector said, uh, you don't have to be a techie to, to join. Um, we could give you all the information on technology and IT and everything like that, but if, if we don't know how to implement it or if you know, the, the users of these things, if, they, if we need that too to help, to, to help us, this is the best practice and procedures, but also implementing it into your business and how did it how does it going to implement on your your fill island or your fill you know your fill plan or or uh, to your drivers you know so if, if whatever you know uh, skills you bring we can definitely use them guys I'm really excited to see where this committee goes thank you both for being on with us today once again if you're interested in learning about the technology committee or any of God's other volunteer committees click the link in the description below for more information Holbard Institute of Welding Technology is excited to offer a four-day Welding for the Non-Welder course. This course gives the non-welder a solid background and overview of the welding field along with some hands-on experience with the major welding processes. 
It's ideal for purchasing agents, plant managers, manufacturers of welding products, distributor salespeople, supervisors, and more to gain an understanding of welding that will make them more proficient in a job that involves welding-related activities. Check out our website today for more information or give us a call at 937-332-9500. In our next segment, Member Services Committee member Colleen Kohler had the opportunity to interview a first-time attendee at the SMC. Unfortunately, we had some audio issues with the microphone, so parts of the interview, you'll notice that the audio has dropped. We apologize to both Colleen and Matt for that. However, we felt that there was still enough good information and usable audio that it was worth including that interview even with the technical difficulties. Hi, this is Colleen Kohler from Member Services Committee here at GAUTA, and I'm here with Matt Reeser from Noble Gas Solutions. Um, we're going to try to get Matt's perspective as a first-time attendee to a GAUTA event. So Matt, you've been in the industry now for six years, and we spoke that even on day one that you've been exposed to GAUTA through the GAUTA consultants, Mike Dodd specifically with DOT. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, it was my uh, first week at Noble back in 2018. I uh, met with Mike Dodd. He walked us through the entirety of our DOT program, which was a bit of a mess at the time. And uh, we got everything completely under control in record time. So it was a great win to start off the career. Great, great. So you've heard a lot about GAUTA, the spring management conference we've sent employees to. So you must have had some level set expect expectation coming in. Um, could you tell us a little bit what you thought about when you were going to come to GAUTA SMC, what you've experienced so far, any feedback? Sure. Yeah, I've been to uh, quite a few trade shows in my career, and um, I've been very pleasantly surprised with the entirety of this. Everything has been absolutely top-notch, and it's been really great. Uh, the networking, the food, the location, everything has been absolutely gorgeous, and uh, it's really great to put a face to all the people that I've been emailing with and working with for the past five, six years. So it's been a great experience all around. Awesome. So what? It, so today, did you attend the educational talk tracks? And if you did, could you share what you went to see and some of the takeaways that you received today? Absolutely. I attended two educational sessions today. The first was uh, with Jeff Holyoke. He did a great job talking about the state of the CO2 industry, the state of hydrogen, helium, um, some larger scale operations going on within our industry. And then the second was with the Horton Group which is something that I've been very interested in for a long time. Uh, done much with it as to get in front of us, and uh, there's a lot of security things that we need to make sure we start to work with that. Okay, wonderful. So would you have any feedback so far from GAUTA, like anything that you would like to see in future events or future meetings? Yeah, I love the forward-thinking aspect. We don't get a ton of exposure to uh, macro trends within the industry unless we come to events like this. So that's been the biggest takeaway for me. I'd love to stay for that. Make sure on that out to the being here. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much, and we will see you soon. Thank you. Lotta Media is the go-to resource for news and information about the gases and welding industry. Through our wide variety of publication platforms, GAUTA Media keeps our members up to date on all of the most breaking news, emerging trends, and member events in the industry. Want to get your company's message seen? We have a quarterly print publication, a twice-monthly newsletter, an online buyer's guide, and a twice-monthly news show. If it's happening at Gas and Welding, it's happening on GAUTA Media. Want to learn more? Contact your GAUTA Media representative today. Today's member news segment is brought to you by Anthony Welded Products. With carts, cradles, cages, and pallets, Anthony has a model for every purpose. During GAUTA Spring Management Conference, Exacore was recognized as the first ever winner of the GAUTA Best in Show Award for their contact booth. Congratulations to Exacore for this prestigious honor. Also during the SMC, you may have seen or heard about one of the hotel staff collapsing during breakfast on Saturday. We wanted to recognize Wisco's Rebecca DeVries for her quick thinking and jumping into action. Rebecca was an emergency room nurse for seven years before joining Wisco. She sprung into action when she saw the employee fall and she stayed with them until the paramedics arrived. The hotel and the paramedics were very grateful for her help. Thank you for your heroic efforts, Rebecca. In other non-SMC news, Central McGowan Gases and Supplies named Jason Kirby as its new president. Red Ball Oxygen announced that Quinn Kennedy has been named a partner in the firm. Meredith Gas Partners announced a new partnership with Advanced Gases. 
Uniweld Products named Frank Vargas as its new national sales manager. Amwins was named a top wholesale broker in MGA by Insurance Business America. The Cavagna Group is celebrating its 75th anniversary in 2024. Chart Industries hosted a ribbon cutting event for its second Theodore, Alabama location. Otodata named Jeremy Eaton as its new CEO. Trendex announced during the SMC that it had been acquired by Valsoft Corporation. Equigas announced that it had acquired Correct Cryogenics. CK Supply is currently searching for a new president to replace Ned Lane upon his retirement. Weldcoa announced that it had hired three new employees. Welcome to the company to Valerie Villarreal, Bonnie Lanson, and Christine Cassaro. The IWDC also announced two new staff appointments. They welcomed Kayla Robinson and Jaina Goodrich. Cryogenic Technology Resources announced that Brian Holland had been appointed as its new president and CEO. And finally, Norris Cylinder announced that National Sales Manager Mark Nagley will be retiring after 10 years of service. To learn more about any of these member news items, or to submit member news of your own, read the complete May 1st issue of The Gauta Connection in your email inbox today, or by clicking the link in the description below. And that's our show for this month. Once again, the education and networking doesn't end with the SMC. Gauta has an entire summer's worth of live, in-person events on tap. Next up on the slate is the Southwest Regional Meeting, which will take place in League City, Texas from May 20th to the 21st. To learn more about this regional or to register, click the link in the description below. And now we conclude this episode as we do each episode of Gotta TV with the Gary Halter Quote of the Month. Until next time, for all of us here at Gotta TV, this is Steve Guillermo signing off.